Let's look at how to use calculators for uh, science. We're going to look at uh, doing scientific notation and also the right sequence to uh, enter numbers in. So let's start with doing the order of operations correctly. So when we put in numbers like this, we often need to um, make sure the calculator puts it in correctly using the parentheses keys. So if I wanted to uh, do this 25 plus 74 times 68, to be sure that it's doing it correctly, I could do 25 plus 74. Um, let me try that again. So 25 plus open parentheses. 74 times 68, close parentheses, and then press equals. So by doing it that way, I make sure that my calculator does the multiplication before the addition. Now, a lot of calculators are programmed actually to do this correctly, uh, even without putting the parentheses key in. So for instance, if I just type this in 25 plus <coughs> 74 times 68, it should give me the right answer in most cases. But we'll look at some more complicated examples in a few minutes where that doesn't always happen. So you want to find the parentheses key for your calculator. Here it is on this style of calculator. Here we have it on this Casio. And on the graphing calculator, we see it's right there. This style of Casio, the parentheses keys are right here. Let's look at how to plug numbers in using scientific notation. So let's start with just putting this number in, 3.75 times 10 to the negative fifth. So to put that in, on this calculator, it would be 3.75 e to the 5 negative. So the e button is the easiest way to put that in. And the e button, it includes the times 10. So it's important to know that you should put the E button in twice or put in a 10. So for instance, I wouldn't want to type in 3.75 times 10 E negative five, because now I've put the 10 in twice. The E button includes the 10. So on different calculators, the E button will be in different spots. So for instance, on this calculator, the E button is right here. And I need to press um, second, the second key to access it. So for this one, it'd be 3.75 second E, and then the sequence is different too. I do the negative first, then the five, enter. There we go. And on the Casio, it's going to be 3.5 times 10 to the X, then negative, then five. Something interesting about these Casios is that they are defaulted to do the fraction uh, mode. There's a couple of ways to fix that. One is to press this button right here, and that will switch between the fraction and decimal mode. Most of the time for science, we are using decimals instead of fractions. Another way to fix that is to to change the, the mode so that it defaults to decimals. So to do that, you could go to shift, mode, press one, then go to number two, and that should default it now. So if I do that again, 3.75 times 10 to the negative fifth, it should remain as a decimal. Now, another thing that you can do with calculators is you can toggle between the um, scientific mode and the regular mode. So for instance, this calculator is set for the standard notation. Now, I could have my calculator automatically put that number into scientific notation by pressing second and SCI. And there we go, so 3.75 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's how you would read that. Remember that the 10 is included, and that's the exponent above the 10. So on this calculator here, if I wanted to put this one into the regular mode, 
I could press second and then access the menu and arrow over to FLO and there we go. So now it's switched it back into the standard notation. Second SEI, arrow over SEI, goes back into regular mode. Graphing calculator, you'll need to access a menu as well. So if I put that number in 3.75 and second E, there's my E button, and I have negative five. So to put this into scientific notation, um, I could go to mode over to SCI and that should um, keep the number in scientific notation. If the number is large, then it will always go in scientific notation as well. So I can also put it into normal no uh, standard notation as well and so that will program things so it stays in standard notation. So here you see I did that and I got 10 instead of 1 times 10 to the first. So if I want to do a math problem now, I have those numbers typed in as in scientific notation. Now I just need to say add this number in scientific notation. So 3.75 times 10 to the fifth plus 7 times 10 to the negative fifth. 7 e 5 negative and then I press equals. So the answer to that is 1.075 times 10 to the negative fourth. Or on this calculator it would be plus 7 second e negative 5 equals and there we have it again, 1.075 times 10 to the negative 4. Just to be sure that we're writing this correctly, so when you write it on paper, it sometimes looks a little different than in the calculator. So what looks like this in the calculator is written like this, 1.075 times 10 to the negative 4. So remember, the, when it's when it's up there, it means that it's that that's the exponent above the top. So here we have it again: 1.075 times 10 to the negative fourth. Let's take a look at this bottom example now. This is a more complex sequence, and it's actually very common for us to see these types of problems um, in conversion factors or dimensional analysis. So let's look at how I would type this in on the calculator. So something can go wrong if I just type punch in these numbers um, the wrong way and I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. Some people prefer to divide these, divide these and then multiply those two products together. That, would, that always works um, but I find I end up pushing extra buttons to do it that way and so I prefer to multiply across and get that answer, multiply across on the bottom, get that answer and then divide. And if I use parentheses keys, it will speed that up a little bit. So I could type in 3.98 e to the fifth times 6.21 e to the 14th, and I'm gonna press equals. Then I'll divide that by open parentheses, and I'm gonna put both of these numbers in within the parentheses. 7.215 e to the 13th times 5.123 e to the 12th, close parentheses, equals, and that should give me the correct answer. So 6.68 times 10 to the negative 7th. <coughs> so on this calculator, we would follow a very similar sequence, but let me show you something that can go wrong when you type this in. So if I did this the wrong way, it would look like this. 3.98 times, oops, I'll try that again. 3.98 second E to the fifth times 6.21 second E to the 14th 
Then I could go divide by 7.215 second e to the 13th times 5.123 second e to the 12th equals. And do you notice that I got different answers? Why might that be? Well, the second time I did it, this one is wrong. And the reason why, so this one is wrong. The reason why is because when you have terms like that, where we have a sequence of terms, if I have something down here and something here and something here and something here, those aren't zeros, those are just representative of things. Let me do blocks. So I have a block, I have a circle, I have a triangle, and I don't know, rectangle. So if I have this kind of thing set up, what the calculator is thinking is, it's thinking, multiply these two things, then divide by that and get that answer. Then, after you've gotten that answer, multiply by this thing. Which means that you basically move this thing to the top. So your calculator is thinking, so here's what my calculator is thinking. All right, so here's your calculator, and here's a little bubble. And what it's thinking is it's thinking this. Square times circle. Then divide that whole thing by the triangle. And then after you've done that, multiply by the rectangle. So basically move that thing up to the top.